I am officially 32 weeks pregnant today and although this is a minor feat for some, for me and my baby this is a major milestone and as overwhelmed as I am to think about how the next few weeks are going to unfold, there's this weird peace within me knowing that we've made it to this point. In today's update, I'm going to be talking about the latest symptoms I've been experiencing, giving an update on how I'm managing gestational diabetes, and also talking about the latest with my complete placenta previa. As far as symptoms go, the one that stands out the most is increased clumsiness. I'm dropping things all day long and I just can't get a hold of it. <laughs> and I'm also to the point where bending over to pick stuff up is just a terrible idea because it's impossible nearly <laughs> so i'm coming to terms with the fact that i'm just gonna drop stuff and just leave it there on the floor for either my toddler or my husband to pick up i'm also starting to feel more tired and i knew this was coming <laughs> i think it has a lot to do with just like carrying around more weight and just like all the physical things that my body's enduring right now but then there's also like this mental exhaustion that's kind of setting in knowing that so much is about to change so quickly and <laughs> I'm starting to get a little bit more nervous about how I'm going to manage taking care of two kids at the same time. Um, my son Lincoln is, uh, whew, he's almost 22 months old, holy cow. And he's just a wild kid, like he's a boy, like he just loves to run, he loves to be outside, he loves to play, he play hard. <laughs> and just thinking about how I'm going to entertain him and all of that while taking care of a newborn is just, whew, man, it's a little bit overwhelming. So I'm hoping that, you know, we'll just figure it out as we go. We're all in this together. There's only so much that I can plan. And if this pregnancy has taught me anything, it's that really planning is almost a waste of time because life can throw so many curveballs. So we're just gonna have to take it a day at a time and just go with the flow. I've had heartburn on and off during this pregnancy. Um, it's not all the time, it kind of depends on what I eat and like if I lay down too soon after I eat. But I will say that the heartburn that I do have has been a lot more intense this time around than it was with my son. Same kind of thing with my son, it was on and off, it wasn't consistent, um, but it was like more contained. Heartburn this time around is like painful, like almost like an added pressure like on my chest and like it hurts. <laughs> so dealing with that, I haven't been popping Tums or anything like that because I'm honestly too lazy to go out and get them. <laughs> and I've really just been trying to drink more water and to be mindful of how soon I lay down after eating. But that's been a not so fun symptom. Another not so fun symptom that is starting to make more of an appearance now are skin tags. Now this happened during my last pregnancy as well. I'm not totally sure what causes them. I don't know if it's like increased weight gain and just like rubbing on clothes in different ways. I really don't know, but they're starting to show up more again. And they did go away on their own after my son was born. So I'm sure the same thing will happen this time around, but it's just kind of annoying to be like rubbing your skin and then all of a sudden feeling a bump and be like, what is that? And then you look down and you're like, oh, cool. The last symptom that I'm gonna talk about today are the varicose veins that I've been getting in just my right leg, which is a little odd to me, I guess. I mean, I don't mind. I would rather it be contained than everywhere, but um, so far they're just showing up in my right leg. I have like a big cluster on my ankle and it's starting to swell a little bit more and it can also get, I wouldn't say painful, but it can get uncomfortable sometimes. So I actually busted out these like compression socks that I had bought forever ago when I was training for a half marathon and I was wearing those a little bit and then I bought some more compression socks on Amazon that are supposed to show up in the next few days, I think. So I'm really just owning like the geriatric attire. As far as my gestational diabetes diagnosis goes, um, it's honestly not as difficult to manage as I feared, thankfully. Thankfully, I've been able to manage it pretty well with just making sure that I'm monitoring how many carbs I'm eating and how much protein I'm getting. 
I've really tried to amp up the protein in my diet and I think that's been a huge help. And then I've also just tried to be more mindful of how many carbs I'm consuming, especially at breakfast. The diabetes um, counselor that I've been talking to has said that it's important to have a lower amount of carbs in the morning for breakfast just because I guess something about hormones tend to spike in the morning and that can cause your blood sugar levels to rise quickly in the morning, something like that. I'm not a doctor. I, I'm just going with it, <laughs> but something like that. So the only time that I've tested my sugar and I've been over was when I was eating more than 30 grams of carbs for breakfast. Other than that, like it's been pretty good. Like at first I was super cautious about what I was eating, really trying to limit carbs. But every time I would take my reading about an hour after I ate, it was like really low. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to experiment a little bit here. And since I've been able to have pizza, I've had like mac and cheese. I've had like, I don't know, <laughs> pretty much normal food and been able to keep my numbers where they need to be. So I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful that I don't need insulin to help manage this. And um, as, if anything, it's more of a nuisance because I have to be consistent with taking my blood sugar, pricking my finger an hour after I eat and right when I wake up. So right now I'm testing my sugar four times a day. Hopefully in the next two weeks, if everything stays level, then I'll be able to cut back on how often I'm pricking my finger and maybe just do like two or three times a day. It's a pain, but it's worth it because I just want to do what's best for baby. When I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes, I was really nervous because I have a major sweet tooth and like I was nervous about letting go of like all things tasty to me, but I have found that there's a few good snacks and dessert-ish type things that I've been eating a lot lately, so I'll go over those. First is the Perfect Bars. They're like a protein bar that you can find in the refrigerated section at the grocery store. They're really good. The peanut butter dark chocolate is definitely my favorite. It totally tastes like cookie dough, but it has a good balance of fat, carbs, and protein, so it doesn't make your blood sugar spike. I've also been loving Halo Top ice cream. I love ice cream so much, and it's not as creamy as like legit ice cream, but it's good enough and like the bars like the frozen dessert bars on the stick those are really good I've also been eating a lot of Dan and Light and Fit yogurt and I like sprinkle some chocolate chips in there just to give it like an added kick <laughs> and then I also have been eating a lot of rice cakes with almond butter particularly I like the chocolate rice cakes with maple uh, I think it's maple maple vanilla almond butter I don't know but that's really good Changing gears here to talk about the latest with my placenta previa. I actually had a teledoc call with my OB this morning and went over everything. Right now, the placenta is, as far as I know, still completely covering the cervix. I actually had another bleed yesterday morning. Um, which was, it's just so frustrating. I had gone about three weeks. I think it was about three weeks without bleeding. And yesterday morning, I woke up right around five and I was like kind of like still like half awake, half asleep, just laying there. And I just started to be like, oh, I kind of feel something. Am I bleeding? And so I got up and went to the bathroom and there's blood, like bright red blood as I wiped. And thankfully, like it didn't get stronger over the course of the day. It just tapered off. And at this point, it's just really light spotting whenever I go to the bathroom and wipe. Um, but it's just frustrating to consistently have to deal with this bleeding because there's just so much uncertainty around it. What's nerve wracking is that I'm getting to the point in the pregnancy where they really don't want to jeopardize anything. So if I have any bleeding, they'll likely have me come in and that will likely mean I'll be in the hospital until the baby's born unless it's bleeding that they can easily like know is under control and then they feel confident sending me home after monitoring me for a few days. So it's just this added layer of just, uh, I don't know, like I'm excited and I'm just ready to just take on 
whatever is in store but at the same time it's just nerve-wracking to know that I could wake up one day and that could be the day I'm having my baby and it's weird because everybody eventually enters that phase of pregnancy but it's usually so much later on me sitting at 32 weeks it's just like man <laughs> that's a long time to be in that mode <sighs> yeah my doctor did say today which does help me feel a little bit better is that um i mean we've made it to a really good point in the pregnancy the hospital that is near us where i intend to deliver doesn't have a um, full-blown NICU they have like a special care nursery but babies born before this time will typically have to be transferred to a different hospital but hopefully we're entering the point of the pregnancy where our baby will be strong enough to be able to stay at that hospital and we can be close to home and hopefully we won't have to stay there very long even if she is born early at this point the plan right now is that I will have my scheduled c-section at 37 weeks so that is two, three, four, five, six, seven, five weeks to go um i have an appointment again in two weeks which will in cousins of another ultrasound where they'll check one last time to see if the placenta is still covering the cervix and if it has moved then can proceed with the vaginal birth but if it's still covering the cervix then we're gonna have to go through with the c-section I, I don't know. I've, I've come to terms with what, what that is and what that means for delivering and recovery and all that. But what's frustrating is that with all this COVID stuff going on, my hospital has officially made the decision as far as now goes that, um, husbands, partners, whoever can't be in the operating room while the baby's being born and i knew this was a big possibility i was just really really hoping that it wouldn't come to this um i get it because pbe is a hot commodity and they can't afford to be supplying that to another person in the room and you know it's really tight quarters up by where my husband would be standing next to me by my head because the anesthesiologist is right there too and they're just trying to limit contact for everybody but it's just it's just really crappy so i'm praying that we'll be able to make it to 37 weeks and that my husband can actually be in the room and witness the birth of his daughter like <laughs> but we'll just have to see what happens Another thing my doctor told me was that I will be tested for COVID ahead of going into the hospital for my C-section, probably like two or three days before. He said they're still trying to figure out the logistics of all of that, um, but I can expect to be tested before entering the hospital. So as far as next steps, it's still just a waiting game. I feel like a ticking time bomb more than ever knowing that if I experience any more bleeding I will likely have to go into the hospital and have to be monitored closely and could potentially not be coming home until I have a baby so we'll see I'm just hoping we can get through the next couple weeks without any bleeding I can go in for an ultrasound maybe the placenta will move keeping my fingers crossed but I'm just rolling with the punches at this point because that's all I can do. I can't help but to feel a little bit like a badass because I'm giving birth during a pandemic. But, you know, this too shall pass. And I'm sure in time we will look back on this time of my life and be like, dang, that was wild. I think that's all I have to share for this update. So I will give a quick bump shot and then close this thing out. Thank you so much for watching. I may or may not be back with another pregnancy update in a few weeks we will see what happens but um just please continued prayers that baby girl can cook as long as possible and that delivery goes off smoothly without too much added drama please give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for what's next bye